Hello everybody and good day. This is Fred with Tech Talk and Wentworth CCTV of New England and we are coming at you today with another subscriber inspired video on which camera to use if you need to capture license plate numbers 100% of the time at any lighting, at any angle, at any vehicle speed. And I have myself uh, been installing security cameras for 15 or 20 years, right? Since I was in the army. Uh, and a common complaint by a client is, hey Fred, you know, we hired this guy to put up this camera. He told us it could capture plates. We spent a lot of money on it uh, and it doesn't, okay? And it doesn't. We all know that you can install any two megapixel or four megapixel IP camera at any driveway and it can in fact capture a plate if the car is going two miles an hour, uh, if it's at the exact head on angle and if the lighting's perfect, okay? Yes, that, that camera can capture plates, okay? But it is not a license plate recognition LPR camera. LPR cameras such as this can capture plates um, when it's pitch black, okay? You don't need good lighting. The car can be going 40 or 50 miles an hour. This can capture the plate. It can be coming in at a 35, 40 degree angle. It can capture the plate. In fact, most of the time it can capture uh, the registration month and year on the plate. The inspection sticker uh, details like that that are important uh, to capturing somebody in the event something happens because let's face it an adequate security camera system if you're if you're covering an exterior environment okay you have eight or ten cameras six cameras and they tell a story okay if it's a self storage building they'll tell you which vehicle went to that unit okay okay they're there it looks like they're cutting the lock now they're loading up the vehicle Okay, when they pass that gate, it's imperative that you get a plate number. If not, everything else was for not. You can post a video, somebody may recognize the person, somebody may not, uh, but if you have a plate number, we know who did it, right? So a quality LPR license plate recognition camera is important. And I will tell you, all the products that I personally select for our videos, uh, I'm not being paid for any manufacturer to do that. I'm doing it because I know most of my viewers and subscribers are do-it-yourselfers and people that own their own security camera companies. So it's imperative to me and important to me that I give you products that are going to work, okay? I'm recommending this camera because we've used many cameras in the past to try to caption, capture plate numbers, uh, and this does it more effectively than, than anybody else. This is a great camera. Okay, it's a heat vision. The model number is IDS. 2CD7A46GO slash P. It's going across the top of your screen right now. Okay? This is a great video. Let's get into it. All right. What do you say? Let's get into the meat and potatoes. Before we do, you know the drill. There is a red subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Please click that and subscribe to our video if you have not yet done so. That way you can be notified when we upload future content just like this. Always like the video if it's useful to you and please use comments. A lot of the, our videos and our content just like this is based on subscriber and viewer questions and comments. So when you unbox the LPR camera, um, you will notice it conveniently comes with a junction box, okay? If we install these at our home or business, we wanna do it professionally. We want these connections to stay dry, okay? Oftentimes I will see a camera, particularly an IP PoE camera, uh, outside in the environment and someone has mounted this and actually left this connection outside okay the internet cable the I you know the the cat 5 or 6 cable is plugged into this pigtail and it's just sitting there so when it rains or it snows eventually moisture is going to get in that pigtail uh, and it's going to make the camera no good there are prongs inside um, they will decay they'll rot and, and the camera will be fried Okay, this is a very expensive camera because of the technology it possesses, so we want to take care of it. Um, so essentially what you would do is you would remove this cap. Okay, there's a cap in the back up here. Uh, when the wire comes through the wall of your home, it would go through the back of this, okay? And there is a big gasket. You'd put this against the wall. Um, all the wire fittings go inside, and you'd mount the camera to this, right? Then everything is dry, okay? You want to do it professionally. There are a ton of pigtails on the back of this camera, okay? The most important one, if you're gonna use a PoE camera, uh, you want a PoE switch. And, and we recommend gigabit PoE switch. Again, there's a link going across your screen right now for a gigabit PoE switch. But what you wanna do is you wanna hook that PoE switch 
to your modem or router that has live internet, okay? So that will go to the upload port of the PoE switch, and then one of the PoE ports will come to this camera, okay? This camera can be up to um, 100 meters, 300 feet away from that PoE switch, and it will still work, okay? When you plug this in, you will want to use the waterproof connector, okay? This goes on the, the snap, okay? The connector on the end of the BNC connector, and it will fasten to the pigtail so you have a waterproof connection, okay? We do not have time to teach you how to make that cable and this, use this connector in this video. Uh, there's a link going across the top of your screen right now to our previous video uh, in which we show how to use these waterproof plugs, okay? So even though it's inside of a junction box, still use the plug, right? Professional, we want it to last a long time. Like I said, it's a very expensive camera. So you've got your Ethernet PoE pigtail. Um, you've got a power input and a power output pigtail, okay? So if you don't have a PoE switch, which is what we encourage, and you want to uh, power this with a standard 12 volt transformer or power supply, uh, you can plug that into here, okay? And once you do that, and once it has power, there is a power output. Uh, if you have another 12 volt uh, device that you want to power, another camera, maybe an analog camera that needs juice, uh, there's a power output pigtail. You've got audio input and audio output pigtails. You've got a, a pigtail for an alarm system, okay? Um, but primarily, okay, primarily in the field, we use the internet, the, the network pigtail, um, and maybe the mic input, okay, if we're gonna have a microphone on the location. You could put a speaker, right? We, we've done previous videos on uh, auxiliary speakers in which you can uh, talk to someone on the other side of the camera. Uh, oftentimes you need to get amps and stuff like that, uh, and it's hard to install that sometimes in a field location, okay? So primarily we're gonna use this camera uh, for video. To, to get a plate number, and all we need for that is the IP pigtail, okay? So the other of these wires can be plugged and put in this box, okay? Now, on the underneath, on the belly of this camera, uh, is also an interface. When you get it out of the box, it will have this cover on it, okay? It comes with an Allen key, okay? Which is TX15, I believe, uh, but you can use that to unscrew this interface, okay? Take it off, and you will see a slot for your micro SD card, okay? There's also a button to reset this camera to factory defaults. And there's another pigtail for a BNC connector, okay? Lots of times when we install these cameras, we'll have a small monitor with us, installers will, uh, that will take a BNC feed, and you can adjust the camera before you have it networked and before the phone app works. Um, to, to be exactly where you want it, okay? Um, so that is what is in here. Um, there are screws, they're really cheap screws. You don't wanna use those. Uh, go to a hardware store and get stainless steel screws um, when you mount this, okay? You're gonna be mounting the junction box. Again, your screws are inside, you wanna do a professional job. Use stainless screws just in case any moisture gets in there. Use the weather food plug, even though it's gonna be in the junction box, to give you additional security in case this gasket fails down the road, okay? We wanna protect our investment. These cameras are five, $600, okay? If you wanna get a plate, um, you're gonna to have to pay for it, okay? And we wanna protect that environment. We want this to last 15 years, right? All right, what I'd like to do now is we're gonna use a PC to log into one of these cameras that is currently in the field and go over uh, its settings, okay? So let's do that now. All right, so we have installed the license plate camera. I am going to log into it remotely. And as you can see, it's a very clear picture. Uh, this truck that's parked in front of it right now doesn't have a license plate on it, but hopefully during the course of this video, we'll see somebody pulling. But the first thing you wanna do when you install this camera, it's going to be um, factory defaulted to a 2.8 millimeter lens. 
which is kind of removed from the drive area for a license plate camera. So you can use the PTZ function um, either with HIK Connect or through login into the camera through a browser um, and adjust that. Okay, right here is the zoom. There's a plus and a minus. Um, 2.8. would be all the way removed like this. Okay. So when you get your camera out of the box, that's probably what you're going to be looking at right there. As you can see here, the vehicle, this is actually a dumpster, but the vehicle is going to be pulling into this area. So what I do when I set these up is I would park a vehicle in this drive and then zoom the camera um, to the plate recognition area um, like so just by hitting plus. Uh, it's this area right here. And as you can see now, we're, we're up close tight. And when a vehicle pulls in there, you will in fact be able to see it clearly. Another uh, question that we get oftentimes with these true LPR license plate recognition cameras at nighttime, you will not see night vision. Okay. This picture will be completely black um, and you will just see the plate. Uh, that is by design. If it had normal infrared, these LPR cameras, uh, the camera would be whitewashed like it is with a normal 2.8 millimeter, um, you know, 4K IP camera. Okay. You'd be able to see the plate during the daytime if it pulled in at the right angle but you wouldn't be able to see it at night okay so we will um we'll wait for a vehicle to pull in now so you can see the license plate recognition ability of the camera and then we will do some playback and try to uh, show you what it looks like at night okay so let's do that all right i have gone through some video and actually located a car in nighttime environment okay it's 1743 with daylight savings time, it is dark here early. Uh, a car has approached and dropped off its trash. And as you can see, it is getting ready to leave. So I have paused the video and wanted to show you the ability of this camera in complete darkness. When this vehicle drives away, you will see that it is completely dark here. Okay, so there's the plate. What you can do is you can hit the magnifying glass here for digital zoom. We can square in that. Massachusetts plate right there and you can see 5 FPN 11 just like that uh, you would not obviously be able to do that without a LPR camera okay that would just be white and washed out okay so that's an example of night vision with a proper uh, license plate recognition camera and um, we can see them drive away and you will see how dark the picture is, okay? That's normal for a license plate camera. It doesn't have the IR illuminators of a normal camera. We want this pitch black at night so we can capture that plate, okay? That's how that works. Now we will switch and show you a, a plate during daylight hours. All right, here we have a truck that has approached. We will pause this video as he pulls away. And there you can see a good example of a of a daytime license plate capture. Okay, we can do the same thing we did before and zoom in. Eight uh, VT five one five again a Massachusetts plate um, works good, right? Um, this is ideal in that someone would have to park here to use the dumpster. Um, you can also uh, capture in the drive here. Okay. If, if they go in here slanted at an angle, even off of camera view, uh, we still have them here. So these are very effective in capturing plates. If you do want to get tag numbers, uh, you want to get a camera that has the LPR license plate recognition technology. And this is certainly a, a good one. We've used this for a few years now. Um, there is a link in the description uh, to this video to order this exact Heek Vision camera. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. We'll see you in the field.